Hello, and welcome to Schmidty's Guide to Chaos DPS in Secret World Legends. This guide is for players who plan on using a Chaos Focus as their primary weapon, and we'll be going over a build and a short rotation for each other weapon in the secondary slot. We'll be going over some of the tips and tricks that I have learned along the way as well, so that you can sort of understand if you aren't doing well, where it is you need to improve. So we'll start off by looking at the chaos focuses that I think are really good. Uh, the Warped Visage is definitely the best personal DPS chaos focus in the game, because every time you get to 8 paradoxes, you gain an extra dimensional doppelganger who is guaranteed to be attacking your target. So that makes it really strong. You'll be doing a lot of extra damage with the Warped Visage, at least personal damage, because every single time you get to the maximum paradoxes, you will be guaranteed to do extra damage to your target. So that makes it pretty awesome. Uh, the other one that happens to be worthwhile, I think, a nice honorable mention, is the Enigmatic Apparatus. I feel like this is best served on the tank, but if you plan on buffing your own party with the Enigmas, this makes it so that you get Enigmas much more often, and the Enigmas are more powerful. So that'll make it so that you can buff your party, whether that be the tank with the defensive ones, or the DPS with the one offensive enigma, which is crit power. It makes it so that you are uh, a buff, a buffer in the party. That's always a good thing. And then let's just get into the rotations and the build here. So our core for Chaos is going to be Deconstruct, uh, Ren a Reality Fracture, because of exposed and because its passive actually makes it so that we do decent damage here. Uh, breakdown is our uh, energy consumer and pandemonium. Uh, I feel like it's finally worth noting that there's a little unspoken rule that I have followed with these, which is I am always using an elite that is from the, the weapon that I am uh, making a guide on. It is worth noting that oftentimes pandemonium is not the best thing to use. There are other good elites that will give you extra benefits, right? Like, um, you know, hinders or purges or stacking debilitated or exposed, and pandemonium really does none of these things. So sometimes you may want to switch off of it because really it just does damage to bosses. It doesn't even impair them unless you're stopping an ability. Then let's look at our core for the Chaos Passives. Resonance Cascade makes it so that the enigmas you create are immediately... Uh, turned into buffs for your party rather than placed on the enemy. Very important. Rend Space is the way that we are going to make Reality Fracture actually do pretty good damage. It actually does about 2,000 extra damage with just this passive, making it a worthwhile skill that also stacks Exposed. Body Double is going to help out uh, with the synergy for our, our Warped Visage, making it so that we do more damage from our Doppelgangers. Now, if you are running the Enigmatic Apparatus instead, I would highly suggest using Long-Term Chaos, which makes it so that your Enigmas last longer, so that means that your buffs on the party will be more potent in that way. Uh, not actually be more effective, but they will last a longer time, making it so that they're just better overall. Uh, then back to the end of our little build here, I am using Blessing of Octed for extra uh, chances of getting Paradoxes, but... This is probably the weakest one, so if you've got another passive that you like to use instead, I would slot it out for this. Uh, then finally we have our Blade. So for this I'm just using <coughs> Swallow Cut and Spirit Blade with <coughs> excuse me, Measure Twice Cut Once. And Measure Twice Cut Once basically makes it so that you can keep up a Spirit Blade indefinitely, which is really good because it sort of takes out the RNG factor that makes blades so difficult to wield and kind of makes it so it's actually a lot more enjoyable to run. So as such, we're actually going to be uh, starting off with Spirit Blade here just to show you. Basically, after the very first fight, you will have a Spirit Blade forged and you should pretty much never lose it. So we'll start with one just to show you the damage that you should expect to be doing in five out of the six fights that you are going to be uh doing in a standard dungeon. I like to start off most of my rotations with Reality Fracture and then Pandemonium so that I'm using some of my big cooldowns first. Then I like to try to make sure that we're not wasting energy and we just go from there. So Reality Fracture, the Pandemonium, use a couple of Blade skills just to 
get rid of some energy, and then we can wait a second before we use any more blade skills because that'll allow us to make sure that we are get taking advantage of measure twice, cut once. And there it is. Now we can sort of throw some blade attacks out just so that we're not getting close to burning any energy. And as you can see, we are almost already at a full set of Spirit Blades again. And now we are guaranteed to be, which is just the most awesome thing. I wish that was always how it was. Blade feels so much better when we play it like this. So, here comes our, I believe that's our third Pandemonium, so we'll be doing one more. And get our Spirit Blade back up sort of spam the energy because we're running low on time here before we stop our rotation. Whoop, 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 we just made a silly mistake. Which is we didn't have... Didn't have enough energy to do a pan pandemonium directly after our reality fracture. We should have just used filler there instead of using an actual uh, energy consumer. So let's see how we did. So, not bad. Uh, the first one, as you can see here, is what happens if you start off with no Spirit Blade and you have to uh, build it all the way up, because that takes a significant amount of time. But if you start with one, which you can see we basically are always going to be starting with one afterwards, you make it so that your damage is pretty significantly increased most of the time. So that makes it so that we are actually doing about 10 times our item power in DPS, which is where we want to be. So, let's switch over to Chaos Hammer, which is our next build. Uh, seen this a million times, but I like Demolish and Seethe with the Outrage passive. Uh, again, if you want to switch out something with Blessing of Octet, you can. I just haven't. And same general idea. So I'm going to use Reality Fracture, Pandemonium, and then Demolish, Seethe, Demolish, and then just make sure I don't burn energy anywhere. So, let's begin. Boom, boom, couple of hammer swings. And then we're just making sure we don't burn energy. Uh, I am also somewhat paying attention to when I swing with hammer to make sure that, yeah, if my pneumatic maul effect goes off, I'll have enough energy to take advantage of it. So I want to make sure I have about eight or so energy before I use my uh, maul, or else I risk losing out on some free damage from my weapon's ability, which is actually still very uh, important, even as the secondary. Now we're going to build up so that we have enough energy to use our big stuff here. And it does have a cooldown, the Pneumatic Maul, so if we get a proc, we can then without fear, throw a couple of more hammer attacks out right afterwards and not have to worry about losing a bunch of energy or losing a bunch of damage to not having the energy. Alright, so let's see how we did there. Uh, oop. So, pretty good. Hammer is a very strong secondary weapon, so that makes it so that we are doing really good damage. Uh, then we are going to run... Yeah. <laughs> Alright. Uh, then we are going to run Chaos Fist. Uh, this one was a little tough for me. I think that Savagery and targeting yourself is probably the best thing that you can do with it. So that's what we're going to do here. And we'll just start the build again. Uh, in this one, actually, we're going to be using Savagery first, and then Reality Fracture. So we'll just do it that away. And we're going to scoot over to a different one so that we're not as interrupted here. At the very least, that person's attacking a different one. We'll go attack this one. So we're going to use Savagery, Reality Fracture, Pandemonium, and then make sure that we just aren't wasting energy whenever possible. So for this one, mostly we only have to pay attention to having enough energy to use our two cooldowns the moment they are off cooldown. 
and that'll help us to keep the build simple and easy while still doing decent damage. So, you might have noticed that the dungeon training dummies for some reason now have like way less HP than they did on the first few videos if you've been paying attention to those. I have no idea why that is, to be honest. That just happens sometimes, so uh, we just go with it. There was a point in time where I was planning on just, with all of my bills, just getting it down to uh, exactly one hit point on the anima, or on the, yeah, anima sim, but uh, then they switched it to where it has 900,000 hit points, and I went, nope. And now they switched it back, so I'm, I'm just ignoring that now. So let's see how we did. Uh, again, right about where we want to be on that build, so nothing too insane, but solid overall damage, and uh, you can always use Savagery to buff whoever happens to be the best player in your party, which helps uh, to increase the DPS even further if that person happens to not be you. So let's go to the Chaos Blood build. Uh, Blood is a bad secondary. I don't like it at all. Um, the only thing I have come up with that really seems to work here is to uh, use a Maleficium really before we do anything else so that we have enough uh, corruption to use Desecrate and go from there. So we're just going to use the Maleficium. Essentially, that just starts our build right there, and then we use Desecrate. And we're going to try to use two Maleficiums after that. Oop, we don't have to try to use a... You have room to use one Chaos ability in there so that you're not wasting as much energy. And from here, it's just doing damage. So we do want to kind of build up both of our um, weapons energies here so that when we have the ability to use our cooldowns, we have a bunch of energy for both of our weapons right after the cooldowns. I believe that was our second pandemonium. Did we desecrate? It looked like we desecrated and then it just stopped us. I don't know what happened there, honestly. And it still won't let us use it, so we're gonna assume that it did that. We're just gonna get to one more pandemonium and call it good. Weird. Alright, so let's see how we did. That was actually pretty solid. Uh, that's way better than you're going to average. Let's see what our crit rating was. Uh, not absolutely crazy. But uh, yeah, that's that's way better than we generally average. Oh, also another reason why you want to use des or your Maleficiums after Desecrate is we're trying to get to a high level of corruption, but we don't want to absolutely blow away our own hit points. And it turns out that uh, for the six seconds after you use Desecrate, Maleficium doesn't do damage to you, which is pretty awesome. So that makes it so that the build works a lot more effectively without having to worry about the healer thinking that you are a suicidal blood DPS. Uh, then we're going to run Chaos Ellie. And Elementalism is a really good secondary because of Crystallized Flame and its passive that essentially makes it do like six times as much damage. And then we're running Mjolnir. Again, if you want to use like Superconductor instead of Blessing of Octet or something, that's... I honestly don't even know which one's better. It's probably so close that it doesn't matter. But take your pick, test around. Maybe you'll see which one is a little tiny bit better. So for this one, I'm actually going to use uh, Crystallized Flame first, and then we'll use Reality Fracture and Pandemonium. Then we're just gonna try to make sure that we are not burning any energy whenever possible. And... There we go. Just sort of build up our chaos energy here a little bit as we go to make it so that when we have our cooldowns up, we can just go with them. And that's about it. Make sure you're using your uh, 
gadget when you can to get extra energy out of it. And right about here, right about with five-ish seconds left, you want to just start building up so that you make sure you have enough energy. And there we go. So we'll get to one more pandemonium, and then call it a parse. We'll lose a little bit of damage from Crystallized Flame because it does its damage over time, but it should still be quite good. Alright, so let's see how we did here. Uh, that's actually going to probably mess up our... Ooh, that's definitely going to mess up our parse, so we'll wait and then we'll pick the correct one in just a second here, guys. Okay. So, there we are. Um, not bad. You can see that we didn't quite do the damage we want to do here because our extra dimensional doppelganger has our max hit instead of <laughs> um, Mjolnir or Pandemonium. So, it looks like we got a decent critical hit rating, but we got a little unlucky on what got critically hit. So a little less damage than we would expect there. We would definitely expect this to be doing above 10 times your item power normally. But, yeah, it always happens. Let's see. So next we're going to be doing, I believe, Chaos Shotgun will be our next one. Uh, and this is a neat one. You actually have a neat ability to be a super buffer if you want to here. Where you can take... Um, Bombardment for full exposed, which means you don't need Reality Fracture anymore, and you can switch out Reality Fracture for Opening Shot. So if you're running the Enigmatic Apparatus and you want to try out being a Super Turbo Ultra Buffer, uh, check that one out, because it's fun. If nothing else, you get to be a Super Buffer, and if there are two really good DPS in your group, that is a great way to make it so that your group does a lot more damage. Uh, here, though, we're just going to be selfish. Uh, we are running Raging Shot, of course as our energy consumer, Shell Salvage, of course, as our passive, and Salvage Expert, of course, as our passive here. Uh, it is quite possible that, like, uh, White Phosphorus or Point Blank Shot are better here, especially since we're using Chaos, which is going to make it so we're always close to our uh, target. But, again, play around with it if you want to. So here, we are going to be using a Reality Fracture, Pandemonium, and then we're just going to blast a couple of giant 5 energy attacks off as quickly as possible so that we can use Shell Salvage and get something actually decent out of it really quick. So here we go. So with Shotgun, try to make sure that during the time you are... Uh, going to be using Shell Salvage directly afterwards, you have some filler in mind already. That way you give yourself a second to see what you get, and that lets you sort of wait it out. Uh, now obviously we are just going to be grabbing Incendiary every single time, and we are guaranteed to get it in our 3 slot because of Shell Salvage's passive, but if you are looking to get, say, like depleted uranium rounds or something, oop, didn't give ourselves enough energy, did we? then uh, make sure that you have some kind of filler. You can see that I'm always using an attack before I actually reload my shotgun there. And shotgun is obviously an incredible secondary because Shell Salvage is so absolutely insanely powerful. And we'll see how we did here. So, I mean, obviously you can tell from the fact that he is at one hit point that this is going to be good. Yep. So, Shotgun is a really good secondary. You can see Pandemonium did our biggest damage. We got pretty nice uh, critical hits. So, do we do a little bit? Yeah, 20% critical hit, which which is pretty good. Um, yeah, I expect that to be on the high end of what you can possibly expect out of this, but... Since it's doing well beyond 10 times our item power, the best that you can expect out of it is pretty awesome. So let's go to Chaos Pistol here. Uh, 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 we don't want to do that. Alright, so uh, I am running Dual Shot and Flourish along with Fixed Game. So Fixed Game will make it so that every four seconds our right chamber matches our left chamber. 
So basically, we are going to use a dual shot when we have a matching pair up. We're going to try to use Flourish when we can to gain energy and swap our chambers if we need to swap them. Otherwise, we can use a dual shot to spin our chambers because if we uh, get a matching set of chambers and our last attack ends before the matching set of chambers does, Fixed Game will not activate, so that means we will not get a guaranteed matching set in 4 seconds. So sometimes you'll have to use Dual Shot just to reset that again. So, again, Reality Fracture, Pandemonium, try not to waste energy. Here we go. So we're just gonna leave that right there, count to 4, and... Boom! We're gonna let that run out, actually. We're just going to use one dual shot to get something else. Then we're going to have to count to four. We're actually just going to get it right after Pandemonium. We're going to shoot off a couple of shots here. And as you can see, when we do that... There we go. You kind of want to make it so that your uh, pistol shot starts... Uh, ...before the matching set of chambers ends, but doesn't or but finishes after it so that you get more uh, chances to spin your chambers like that. Helps you out. We're waiting for the matching pair, which should happen right now. Blow as much energy as we can here. And we ended with a lot of energy there. So probably could have run that a little bit better so that we were closer to out of energy before we finished that parse, but let's see how we did. We still did fine, right? That's pretty much exactly 10 times our item power. So uh, pistols also tend to be a pretty solid secondary weapon. And finally, we have rifle. So I keep on saying that rifle is a bad secondary weapon, and in comparison to rifle as a primary, it is. But this thing, this thing right here, Incendiary Grenade, incredible, efficient damage on a two-second cooldown. Uh, just makes it so that despite the fact that it is relatively a bad secondary, it tends to keep on doing some of the best damage as a secondary in all my rotations. So we're just going to stop saying it's bad. <laughs> so uh, real quick, we'll run over it here. For our AR, we are running Burst Fire and Incendiary Grenade. And it, Incendiary Urinate is actually so good, this is the only one where we have just thrown Blessing of Octet out the window and put stability on, because I'm not going to lie to you guys, this right here, this is going to do more percent of your damage than anything else by a wide margin on this build. So, Incendiary Grenade is where it's at. So here, I'm going to just use Reality Fracture, Pandemonium, and then we're going to use some rifle skills to try to pick up a... Uh, grenade. You do not want to use Burst Fire if you already have a grenade, because that will possibly lose you the chance to get a second grenade with that Burst Fire. And the grenades, the grenades are where you get your damage. So, Reality Fracture, Pandemonium, Burst Fire, we got a grenade, so we're immediately going to shoot it. We got a grenade, so we're immediately going to shoot it. Uh, we can do this because of a recent update to how uh, grenades work that helps us out quite a bit actually also try not to use your rifle unless you're going to have enough energy left to use a burst fire and the uh, grenade afterwards if it happens to slot a grenade so somewhere around six energy is pretty much where you want to be five or six energy or you want to be sure that you have your uh, valley metabolic accelerator up right away so that if you get the grenade, you'll just be able to accelerate up to the energy that you need. As we're going to try to do here. Ah, okay. Tried to do something cool. Did not succeed. So we're just going to keep going with our rotation. And that's it. So there we go. Sort of back off of them a little bit. Try not to have this damage over time effect to completely destroy our parse, and let's see how we did. Okay. 
so again, a pretty solid one. Uh, Extra Dimensional Doppelganger does our biggest hit again, but uh, even despite that, we are still doing nicely above 10 times our item power. So those are kind of the builds and the rotations, the things that I would look out for as you go. Uh, and if you're looking to see uh, Elementalism or the last set of weapons, which is going to be the firearms, I'll be doing those soon. I will see you there.